Well, occupancy loads are important. They give us the number of people that can occupy a given space. However, every occupancy has different requirements. So the occupant load is based on two primary factors. Uh, that being how many people can we get into that given space based on its occupancy and then uh, for the square footage. So we'd have to look at the square footage in the code to see how many people are allowed per square foot and then we'd get a number and we would usually go in and say okay uh, length times width we subtract the permanent objects and we, we come up with a, a number of people that can occupy that space. The second factor is do we have enough door capacity with to accommodate that number of people. So typically when we do an occupant load if we go in and we calculate that number for the, the floor area we then come back and we say okay do we have enough door capacity with and there's there's some math that goes into that and we find out uh, for instance that there's not enough capacity with and we're going to lower the occupant load to accommodate the doors. So we're always going to be very conservative with our numbers. The occupant load is based on the occupancy itself and the occupancy is determined by the use of the building. So we may have a large structure uh, let's say we just have a large square building. Um, depending on what we use it is going to depend on the factor or the, the square footage per person. So for instance, for most assembly occupancies, nightclubs, uh, churches, restaurants, we're going to have a factor of 7 to 15 square feet per person. And 7 is if everybody's just standing next to each other and 15 square feet per person for tables and chairs. Uh, whereas if we went to a business, we took that same shell and we said, okay, it's a business occupancy just for doing routine business. It's going to be at 100 square feet per person, and we don't take out fixed objects. It's just the gross square footage at 15. So it's really the use which determines the occupancy, and the occupancy, you go to a chart of occupant loads for that given use, and it tells you how many square feet per person. Impediments, you know, some of the things that we'll find on during an inspection. Uh, fixed objects contribute. Obviously, if we have um, lar uh, a, we have a uh, nightclub with, with bars and tables and pool tables, you can't walk and you can't occupy that space. So in that instance, we would subtract that out to get your actual available square footage. First is adding on to the existing uh, floor print of the building or changing the occupancy. Okay. Um, however, um, removing fixed objects, removing impediments. Um, sometimes if you want to uh, change out some of your building space and you want to have more people, but you want to keep the same footprint, maybe you want to move some walls and some fixed objects out of the way. But that's really, uh, that's really about it. Um, other than changing the occupancy, we, we often have a building where somebody's got some sort of occupancy like a like a school and, and later on that building becomes unoccupied and then they want to make it a gymnasium or something like that. Well, then obviously the factor changes and what you can, what you can do with that building changes as, as well as the occupant load. So those are the types of things that we would look at in order to make an increase. The occupant load of the building typically determines whether or not a fire alarm system or a sprinkler system is required. Um, there's a lot of misnomers that we, we seem to think that if our building has sprinklers, we can add more people or we can do uh, certain things to our buildings. That, that, that's not true. The, the square footage requirements and the capacity with requirements all stay the same. So if I have a given space and I have enough doors and I have enough uh, square footage to occupy the, you know, with people, well, then that solely determines the occupant load and then that number is whether or not we get triggered into a sprinkler system or a fire alarm system. It's not the opposite way around. So if I have a small building and it can only accommodate 100 people but it's a sprinkler building, that doesn't mean I can add people to it. I still have to, I, I'm still set to the parameters of the square footage and the occupiable square, the occupiable door width.